On this month's edition of Hometown History, I wanted to honor Black History Month by focusing on the Golden Blocks. It was an area between Gwinnett and Campbell Streets that are now known as Laney Walker and James Brown Boulevards. There were so many people that made a big difference that I had a hard time choosing who to talk about. In the end, my fascination with Lucy Craft Laney won out, but the Golden Blocks produced some truly inspiring people. This was a cluster of black owned businesses as far as the eye can see. The Golden Blocks rose during Jim Crow under the backdrop of legal segregation. Corey Rogers, an historian at the Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History, says African Americans in that community decided they weren't going to let it hold them back. And so African Americans, for the most part, said to themselves, okay, there are legal things that are being put in place to keep us within certain boundaries. What we're going to do is to create our own industry. We're going to become our own entrepreneurs. Many of those businesses are gone now. From Dr. S.S. Johnson's pharmacy in the back of his home on Twig Street to the famous Lenox Theater. And mind you, it's not the Lenox. Those who grew up in this neighborhood will correct you. It's the Lenox as they pronounce it. And some are still around. And you had uh, W.H. May's Mortuary, which interesting enough, this is their 100th year. They're celebrating this year their 100th anniversary. Lucy Craft Laney was born in Macon, Georgia in 1854. Laney started the Haynes Institute, the first school for African American children in Augusta. Joyce Law, an historic preservation activist, says Laney's impact is priceless. The influence of Lucy Craft Laney is immeasurable when it comes to lifespan education, a spiritual uh, philosophy of which that there were no limits to what a person could achieve, and certainly African Americans. Laney founded the Haynes Institute, the first school for black children in Augusta, in 1883. She was a highly educated woman, and over her 50 years as principal of the school, she made sure her students got an exemplary education. How will African Americans navigate the new normal? How will African Americans survive and thrive in this new country where four million formerly enslaved people are now free? And so education becomes that vehicle for her. Many of Laney's students went on to do big things. One of those students was author Frank Yerby, who is most well known for his novel, The Foxes of Harrow. But he started writing short stories, and he won the O. Henry Award for his short story, Health Card. He then wrote a novel, his first book, right out the gate, The Foxes of Harrow, in the 1940s. The Foxes of Harrow sold over two million copies worldwide. 20th Century Fox paid him $150,000 for the rights. That's equivalent to nearly $3 million today. It made him the first African-American author to have a novel turned into a movie. There were, were many noted authors during this time, but Frank Yerby, because of the popularity of the book, and also, too, keeping in mind, even to this day, so many of Mr. Yerby's ardent readers did not know that he was African-American. So in a way, he had a leg up because it wasn't pigeonholed as African-American writing. It was just a wonderful story. Law says Yerby grew up around highly educated and exceptional people. His maternal aunt, Louisa Smythe, was in the first graduating class of Haynes. All of her siblings followed, and they were career educators living in the combined Smythe Yerby household. There is no way that he could not have been a literary prodigy. The Lucy C. Laney Museum has partnered with the Greater Augusta Arts Council to create the Golden Blocks Project. Pax Bobro is the project manager for the council. She says it was created as a way to show more people the history of the Golden Blocks. What this project does is it brings the history and knowledge and stories that are housed in the Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History out into the street where anyone can see it, you encounter it and you learn and you get to celebrate Augusta's rich heritage. Sayla Jeter Allen is one of the artists. She says being chosen to paint a mural was an honor and she even wrote a song about it. Experience and see the Golden Blocks legacy awaken and learn family now it's our turn. 
There's so much more to know about these remarkable people in Augusta's history, their drive and determination to be well-educated, to be entrepreneurs, and to be successful, and their legacy can still be felt today. Hey, Augusta, that's just part of your hometown history. In Augusta, Kim Vickers, WJBF News Channel 6.